hate racists with a passion. And for people to have today, and I hate racists, and you feel like <laughs> now you want to come and be showing yourself and you think that someone like me is going to back down. Oh, very, very mad. It's very, very important at this time that we ignore ignorance and we ignore people. Sorry, my lips are dry. We ignore people that come through and try to make these situations what they're not. And in no way, obviously you lot know, man. I'm not even apologising, first of all. But there's no way that I have the opinion that there's no other forms of racism. Of course, there's other forms of racism. But a black man was just murdered in cold blood in the streets, stateside, again, while saying that he can't breathe. That's a continuous cycle going on. And although I don't live in the States, but I'm black. So I say it again. Fuck you racist white people. and welcome back to my channel. So we all know the awful situation going on right now in America with the murder of George Floyd by some police officers. It sparked massive riots throughout the country. There was also some shootings in Chicago that killed a number of black people and the Karens have come out in full force. Honestly, seeing this stuff on like a daily basis just constantly is really draining. And I know it's not just me that feels this way. It's very draining as a black person to read about all this going on. Like essentially, like essentially a race war is kind of going on right now both online and in actual real life a lot of the time i'm just like my chest i can't but i just wanted to make this video concerning john boyega's tweets that he made recently can i just say it's really nice to see black british public figures speaking out about this i feel like although this is like an issue with america at the moment all of us as black people are affected by this and it's nice that we are showing our support our presence as black british people and we're able to talk about our own experiences within the uk there's this tweet i saw that kind of accurately described how i'm feeling right now and how a lot of people are feeling but yeah he simply tweeted i effing hate racists who who doesn't dislike or hate racists but no you get these widows that come out of their corner who always want to fight. You get the actual people that he's talking about, the racists coming out in droves to come and attack him. I really want to highlight the problematic areas within the white community and within the black community when it comes to race, particularly in this case, Africans, and then more specifically, Nigerians. I will get to the Nigerians in a moment. And the responses that he was getting, like, why is it all the time when black people say, I don't like white on black racism? Someone, has, someone always has to jump up and say, Asians face racism. I, as a white man, I've been discriminated against by a black woman before. I've been discriminated against because I've been the only white person in, the, in a room full of black people before. <sighs> These arguments are so frustrating. It's like, when I come to you and I'm telling you I have a problem, it's like, you always have to add, but this, what about this? What about that? But, 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 but. If a female celebrity were to come out and say, I really hate sexists, and then specifically says, I really hate male sexism. Let's be honest, do you think it would have this much backlash as John Boyega's tweet would get? I mean, of course you'll get those losers of life that will always want to fight with everything that someone says. That even seems to be slightly left-leaning, you'll get those vultures and those losers that always want to fight with people like that. There's this thing of people not wanting to see black people complaining. People don't want to be bothered by racism. Like, let's be real, around the world, there's a lot of anti-blackness in a lot of different sectors and different industries. So I wanna kind of give my own perspective on the British attitude towards racism. It's kind of just my perspective and my observation about it. So British culture is very much like, keep calm and carry on, a stiff upper lip, you kind of just get on with it. If you're seen to be complaining, it's like, why are you complaining? Like, get on with it. If you go back to the world wars, it was very much just like, you know, keep going on and don't wallow in like misery and things like that. Historically, Britain's had its own problems with class and xenophobia. Like, England has done a lot of crap to other countries within the United Kingdom. Like, the tension between England and Scotland and like England and Wales and England and Northern Ireland. If you were to speak to the patriotic people, of say Scotland for example and ask them their feelings toward England you would have a lot to hear they would have a lot to say okay the UK has not has not even dealt with its own xenophobic and classist issues within the UK to this day it's still kind of brushed over and kind of like an attitude of get over it so if they act this way towards their own people imagine when it comes to now racism and just race as a topic 
<laughs> like it's mad <laughs> the denial straight denial i feel like there's kind of these go-to things that ignorant people like to point to as soon as you mention racism there's the all lives matter argument you must hate white people argument be grateful for your opportunities for living in this country as if that's not racist in itself there's the i'll report you to authorities that could be either you know karen behavior reporting you to the police or um on twitter now as it's happened to john boyega now he had his tweets reported i know there's a straight i'll go back to africa kind of responses which are you know i've been a youtuber for all of two seconds and even i've had those responses my video on white privilege when it came to lawrence fox hmm the racist came out <laughs> i really feel like the topic of racism is like blood to a shark like they just jump on these situations these people are quite disturbed they're quite disturbed a great example of this is katie hopkins this one she's not even a troll i don't want to call her that she's actually a demon like she's just a racist demon and her comment in itself i'm not reading that crap but like and people still want to say she's not racist like if you think she's not racist then you're part of the problem mate sorry <laughs> i don't want to give her any more attention than, than she already gets like kind of contradicting myself by talking about her right now but just some people and some responses are just not worth responding to i've come to the conclusion in my life right now there's just some responses i just don't want to argue with i i can't be bothered it's really not my job to be fighting back and forth with deniers and people who don't want to acknowledge their white privilege and that in itself i i really feel like there's a certain shame and stigma when it comes to white privilege which is why there you know there's this phenomenon called white fragility with white privilege it shouldn't be seen as something to be shameful of instead use it as a tool if you are white and you acknowledge your white privilege use it as a tool to help with further injustice i'm not just talking about right now you know reposting retweeting things about george floyd or you know general pol police brutality i mean you know when you're in your own circles and you might hear an offhand comment about black people or i don't know your grandma's going on about the blacks in the community or you know the asians or blah blah blah, blah. things like that that's your opportunity to speak up. I would encourage non-black people who have black friends, black peers, black partners, black co-workers to use their privilege to educate themselves, help to dismantle the systematic and systemic racism that is embedded in the West. There's plenty of books around that can explain this a lot better. I'm very much a pro proponent of acknowledging black Britishness. I think definitely when I was growing up, there was definitely much a lack of a black British presence. If you saw anything, prominent about black people would always be African Americans but I'm glad that nowadays we have our own more of a voice for ourselves because I feel like the racism that we face is, is slightly different to what they face. Like, every single country has their own culture of racism so I just think when it comes to black British people we should definitely know more about our own history of racism, our own history of classism and how that kind of ties in. You know, it's all well and good reposting and tweeting about these things but you also it's good to fortify your mind and I always encourage people to read from um, academics, from scholars, people who really know what they're talking about, who can back up their arguments with statistical evidence. Everybody, white, black, Asian, other, please read up on your own racial history i'll probably list some more books in the description that i would definitely encourage other people to read so i feel like there's this sort of feeling of not wanting to rattle white people that some black people feel it's like they don't want to rock the boat they'll try to like all lives matter the situation again so they don't seem like they're the ones uh complaining this guy even responded to john boyega basically saying something along the lines of oh well i had a girlfriend who hated white people and i broke up with her it's like what's the relevance here <laughs> like that we're not talking about that kind of racism so by talking about white on black racism how does that mean that i'm saying that other types of racism don't exist or they're not valid i kind of feel like with some africans particularly african immigrants they want to be seen as the ones who are not the troublemakers the ones who can advance the society to which they're trying to integrate into it's been well documented that there has been and still is to a certain degree 
friction between African Americans and African immigrants within America. You could get really deep into that sort of clash between these two cultures. So I feel like certain black people try to distance themselves between their very stereotypical kind of behavior of black people, you know, misbehaving, committing crime, complaining, and they don't want to be seen in that light. It's kind of, it can be frustrating. I personally don't like the terms Uncle Tom or Coon or, you know, things like that. I just, I don't think it's productive and no. Nah. And yeah, I get it. It's annoying. It's frustrating to be represented in every single black person because we're so underrepresented when we are shown say for example in the news if it shows a black person in the news where you know he's been convicted of murder you kind of feel this pressure of oh my god like why did he have to be black because you know yourself that this is how other people are going to see you by the actions of someone else you've never met in your whole life you don't know anything about them they're a complete stranger to you but people will base the random actions of another black person and kind of put it on you. I personally don't care to mince my words. I'm not going to mince my words for anyone, white, black, other, I don't care. Like this is how I feel, this is what I mean. I said what I said. If it's not pleasant for you to hear, then that's fine. You go your separate way. But I'm not going to dull myself down or dilute what I have to say so that I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. I would like to end on a somewhat positive note, but the way things are going right now, honestly speaking, I don't have much hope about the convictions or anything like that, unfortunately, but I just hope that we can educate ourselves in our own history and be able to fortify ourselves, our minds, not just to be physical about everything, but to also be knowledgeable. It's great that celebrities are speaking up, but I think it's like a, a fine line with where we place our celebrities when speaking on social issues. Um, we also need to prop up the academics, the actual activists who know exactly what they're speaking about. Um, we're running into certain territory where we have certain celebrities who are using this as a way to draw attention to themselves. I'll keep it real, I don't want a rapper to be the face of black social change. I don't. I'd rather have a politician or an activist or a scholar, an academic, a doctor of some sort. But that's just my take on it. I would love to know other people's comments. If you're going to leave racist comments, I'm going to block you. <laughs> if you would like to, please do subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. So please help me on that journey. I'll love you forever. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'll see you later. Thank you.